Today I will be doing a serpentine belt and a few idler pulleys on this 2013 Toyota Tacoma. This is a TRD off-road version and this is the V6 model because of course what other model is there? Do you really want a four banger Tacoma? So this is going to really suck. I, I honestly don't want to do this. Um, and uh, before I start, I just want to make a note. I am in my garage because the thing about doing a serpentine belt is that once you pull it off, your car is not going to go anywhere at all. So before we get started, um, you want to go ahead and plan ahead. If you plan to take a long time to do this, then park it somewhere safe. Like me, I'm fortunate enough to have a garage, so I'm ready to go. A lot of other videos I've seen do it from on top of the engine, and it really makes my back hurt just looking at that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this skid plate down here. There are four bolts that hold this on. And fortunately, this skid plate is super, it's really a lightweight skid plate. It's not like what I find, for example, on my Lexus GX, where the skid plate weighs like 30 pounds. Um, so what I'm going to do is take these four bolts off and drop this thing down. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and remove the engine cover off this amazing engine. So here we go. This is a 10 millimeter bolt taking these off. One cool thing about Toyota is number one, you don't really ever have to work on them. But when you do work on them, like right now, um, they use a lot of common sizes. This is a 10 millimeter. You'll see that a lot with Toyota and Lexus. 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter and 14 are very common. So you can literally just leave those three sockets out of your toolbox and you have everything you need. So there we go. Check it out. There's a hinge on the back of this. You can just lift it up, but you can also pull it off the hinge like that, like I've just done here. Now, when you put this down, please don't put it on the top. Make sure that you just put it on the ground with the bottom down. You really don't want to scratch this thing. I mean, this thing is worth a lot, actually. You'd be surprised how much an engine cover will cost you. Uh, 200 bucks, whatever. So anyways, yeah, so here's the engine. It's filthy, as you can see. Uh, the amazing legendary Tacoma V6. This engine does have the oil filter on the top of the engine. If you're not sure if this video applies to you, that's an easy way to know. And as I mentioned before, I do plan on replacing some of these idle pulleys, like this one right here. Um, whenever you have that belt off, make sure you spin them and make sure that they, they spin freely. Now, if you're like me and your, your truck has like 170,000 miles on it, you might as well replace all of the ones that you're willing to just do. If you've never taken the skid plate off, you should have an impact drill or you should have a breaker bar. That's going to make your life a lot easier because these things are totally seized up. But having a drill like this makes it a lot easier. Also, side note, when you lower it down, you will have these little hooks that are in your chassis that catch that plate. They're on each side, which is a really cool feature. That way, when you take this off, it doesn't fall on your head. Lexus and Toyota are amazing for having that in there. Working under your truck, always use protective glasses. I don't care how drunk or tough you are. You don't want a bunch of crap going into your eyeballs. So routing this thing is going to be super complicated. There's a lot of pulleys in there, um, and there's a lot of other stuff, so make sure you fully understand the route before you get started. Take a lot of pictures, or you can just screenshot this right here. So this tells you the route of the belt and how you can put everything back together without ruining your Tacoma. And just as a side note, it just goes to show you how vitally important this serpentine belt is. I don't know if this is the original, but my truck has like 168,000 miles on it. And I'm, I'm only going to go ahead and replace this because I know it needs to be done. If you look at the belt on my truck, it actually looks pretty healthy. You know, look at that. It looks great. But I'm not going to wait for this thing to fail. And let me tell you why. Because look at this freaking route here. If you have a failed belt, you're going to lose the power steering pump. You're going to lose your water pump, your AC compressor, everything. And that's why you cannot drive your truck without this. Don't go cheap on your parts. These are all Lexus or Toyota branded parts that I'm using on my truck. I will put all the part numbers on the screen for you to see. But like I've seen these available at, for, for example, AutoZone. Uh, there's a Duralast brand. But take a look at the quality of OEM Toyota parts. This roller by itself is worth like 60 bucks, which is horrible. But seriously, just please invest in OEM parts. Because if you have a cheap Chinese roller, 
if this idler pulley is a cheap Chinese Duralast or other generic and it goes out, your entire truck is going to stop running. So do not ever use cheap, crappy aftermarket parts. Another pro tip, I got this entire package here for like 170 bucks on eBay. Do not buy the parts individually because if you do your research and you actually put effort into it, you can save a lot of money on these things. All right, and here's what you will see when you take the skid plate off. And I can tell you already that doing this from below is gonna be a lot easier. I see a lot of videos that do it from above and it looks like some form of torture. Um, so I can, as you can see, I have my, my breaker bar here with a 14 millimeter socket and it's on the tensioner. So what I'm gonna have to do is move the tensioner like this. And if you look really closely, you'll see that when I do that, it actually decompresses the belt and gives it some slack. So I'm gonna move the tensioner with one hand like this and I'm gonna do my best to just remove the belt with my other hand. I finally have the breaker bar onto the tensioner. Um, I actually had to shove these hoses way out of the way so that the breaker bar could go up far enough because you do have to completely turn it. So in order to do this, you need to put one hand up here to hold this on and then use your other hand to turn it all the way and then hold it. I can hold it against this frame, for example, then grab this belt and remove it. All right, and I'm all done. I went ahead and just moved the breaker bar to the left and I grabbed it up here. You can see the belt is now loose. So let me go ahead and take this thing off. The rest of this is pretty easy. You just grab the belt like this. And then you remove it from each component of your engine. And then you have to kind of sort of wrap it around the blades. As you can see here, you gotta kind of hug the blades a little bit to get it off. And here's the old serpentine belt taken off the truck. This belt has 168,000 miles on it, which is incredible. Because if you look at the outside, it looks pretty much flawless. And if you look at the inside, look at that. There's no cracking or anything. So I've heard with newer belts, they don't actually crack, which makes them a little bit dangerous because it means you don't know when they're ready to be replaced. But if you look at the side of this thing, it is extremely thin. There's a lot less material on this old one than on this new one. This is the Toyota OEM brand new belt that I'm about to put on. Um, and again, if you look at the side, look at how thick this belt is right here. And if you compare it side by side, you can see how that old one, the one on the bottom is super thin compared to the one on the top. This is why you really wanna stick with OEM. I see guys out there, they're getting aftermarket serpentine belts. But seriously, what is the point unless you're on like an extreme budget or something? This belt lasted almost 200,000 miles. I mean, what more could you possibly want than that? Let's go ahead and talk about the pulleys that we're gonna replace. Now, I do wanna reiterate, you don't need to replace these unless they are worn out. If they have play in them or if they don't spin freely, then you need to replace them. But for me, I'm gonna do it because why not? I have the belt off and I might as well just do it. So there are three pulleys on this truck here here and here okay so this is like a heavy duty one right here and this one goes on the bottom this one right here this is the uh, part number for the heavy duty one it ends in 31040 and then there are two of these other ones that are lighter duty 31020 and those look different they look like this what's funny is they look just like skateboard wheels even the bearings on the inside um, they're very, very beefy. So again, OEM's the way to go. So heavy duty is this lower one, which is right by the crankshaft. That's probably why it's a heavy duty one. And then two of these, which is right here and right here. And just as a quick note on this one right here, you will have a washer on the outside of the pulley and on the inside. So make sure you reuse those from the old one because the new box will not come with new washers. The larger washer goes on the outside of the pulley and then the smaller washer goes on the inside just like that. I've already done one of these. And uh, so this one right here on the top that you see right here, that one was really easy because you can reach it from the top, just use a breaker bar with the same exact uh, socket, the 14 millimeter socket that you use for the tensioner. All right, so all pulleys have now been removed. The top one that's behind the coolant line that I showed you you can get to that thing from the bottom. Here's the new belt, and the way I'm gonna do this 
is I'm gonna begin by just wrapping it around the fan. So you can kind of work the new belt around the fan blades. That way it gets into place. All right, so here's what I've done here. What I did was I rested the belt on the fan slash water pump pulley. And then on the top right, I've routed it over the alternator. And so again, I'm just following the map. I'm gonna go over that alternator under this next pulley and then around the entire side. However, I'm not gonna connect this side yet because my long-term plan here is that at some point I'm gonna to have to pull the tensioner and then put this one on by hand. Now, I do wanna reiterate there is a hole in the tensioner. You can actually move it all the way and stick an Allen key through it to hold that tensioner in place. Um, unfortunately though, I don't think I can do that from the bottom or the top because it's a pain in the ass and I have a bad back. But anyway, so here we go. I'm just routing over here. I'm gonna go all the way across a little bit and then on the bottom and then finish from the bottom of the truck. So here's the view that I have while routing the belt. And as you can see, doing it from below, it's actually not that hard to do. I'm sure, I'm sure it might be hard putting the belt on at the very end, but I've got my trusty map here. And while you're routing the belt, make sure that it is fully seated inside each channel and the flat side is always gonna be up against the pulley. So you see this, the, uh, the part of the belt with the ribs like that right there, that's not gonna touch the pulley directly. If you have that, then you're doing it wrong. That will always be inside of a channel like this one right here. So make sure it's always inside the channel all along the belt. I cannot film this next part, so I'm gonna show you ahead of time. I have routed the belt and I have done my best to put it around the power steering pulley. And so now I'm gonna get under the truck, decompress the tensioner, and try to use my other hand to put it around the pulley and be done with this crazy thing. Okay, I'm now done. It took me like three minutes to do that. So what I did was uh, I just pulled the tensioner with my left hand, and then I was able to put it over that power steering pump pulley with my other hand. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feel with my fingers on each of these pulleys to make sure that the belt is completely within the channel. I'm not gonna trust my eyeballs. I'm gonna use my fingers and I'm gonna feel each one, each pulley and each component to make sure that the belt is ready to go before we start the truck. And now for the moment of truth. By the way, I promise I will upload this video even if I fail and my engine blows up because I'll probably get more views anyways. Here it goes. All right, awesome. Looks like the fan is spinning and the belt's still on there and the engine is happy. So uh, yeah, that's how you do it. So now I'm gonna just clean off the top of my engine, put the engine cover back on, put that skid plate back on and I am all done. And that's how you do the serpentine belt with all pulleys on a second generation Tacoma V6. Be sure to wipe down your engine cover just as a way to say thank you to your taco for being such an amazing truck. I do want to note this is the first time I've ever done a serpentine belt. I probably spent about two hours total both yesterday and today to do all of this. If I did not do the pulleys, I could have done it probably in half the time. But anyways, I hope this helped you out. Let's put mechanics out of business. I'm just kidding. There are some good ones. But anyways, if you found this helpful, please hit the like button and please consider subscribing. All you should really need is a YouTube video like this one and some time and you can do this on your own. Thank you for watching and bye bye.